You know the drill. Thank you to those who commented Kung Fu Panda in the last one. Stick around to the end to this Canucks video for a chance to be featured in the next one. But this topic right here in this video, ooh, man, it's a doozy. Because Vancouver Canucks practice kicked off yesterday, and there is so much to talk about, man. Holy crap. I needed to make an entire video about this, but like, I don't even know if we're going to be able to expand on everything. So... Without further ado, let's just go over the sources. We have Brennan Batchelor tweets, we have Chris Faber tweets, we have Harmon Dale tweets, we have tweets from a whole bunch of people going over what exactly went down at Vancouver Canucks practice at Rogers Arena yesterday. So, we had things kicked off by a whole bunch of pretty good news on what exactly the pairings were going to look like. Because, firstly, hey, it was the line rushes for Group A. We had ourselves a new pairing of Alex Edler and Nate Schmidt playing alongside of the Lotto line. So right away, okay, that is Schmidt's partner for the season. Is it going to be Alex Edler? Okay, I like the sound of that. Also, Lotto line being back, Miller, Besser, Pedersen, 649, definitely does seem awesome to see there. Then, we had ourselves a whole bunch of updates on how exactly the rest of this Group A looked, because if you take a look at the Group A, you had Beagle out there with Ben, Besser, Breezebois, DiPietro, Erickson, Edler, Gadjevich, Grayovac, Holtby, Lockwood, Miller, Mott, a few other guys there too. Here's a tweet from Chris Faber. Not quite a photo finish for Louis Erickson, who had been last in each bag skate. So... You know the bag skate? Yeah, I don't need to explain what that is. They go from one side of the ring to the other side, and then they go back again. You know what a bag skate is. Erickson finished last in these, and then if you go over to Harmondale, this is what he said about the Erickson thing. You know we're moving closer to normalcy because Louis Erickson had the net wide open on a rebound within a foot of the goal in a drill and completely flubbed it to casual wax, and he fanned on it then. Yeah, Erickson is in, what, mid-season form? Are we gonna, are we gonna say that? Okay. Somebody who did look good, though, was Jake Vertanen, who looked better today compared to both of the day ones of the camps last year. That is a very big improvement, because when it comes to Jake Vertanen, we've all kind of known that the biggest issues with Jake usually arise at the start of training camp, when everybody's coming back in and they're doing the conditioning and all that stuff, so... To see Jake actually do quite well, it's definitely welcomed. In fact, if you go over the actual lines, these are what we had for the first group. Miller, Pedersen, Besser, Mott, Sutter, Vertanen as a line, Gadjevich, Grayovac, Lockwood, and Beagle and Erickson playing as a fourth line pairing right there. Paired up with Edler Schmidt, Ben Rathbone, Breezebois, Sautner, and Jet Wu as the seventh D. This Group A also had Holtby and DiPietro as the goaltender. So, right away, we have one NHL pairing right there, Edler Schmidt, and then you have Ben Rathbone, who might be somewhat of a taxi squad. Who knows if Rathbone plays in the AHL or whatever. If he's good enough to crack the NHL, we will see as things go forward. Breezebois, Sautner having these guys as a nice pairing there. You know, we've experienced Breezebois and Sautner hockey over the past few years. Jet Wu's a guy who definitely will have a spot in terms of trying to break on the team, but he hasn't played pro hockey yet. He's been in the WHL this entire time. He'll probably need some Utica experience, so I don't really see him making the team right away. But then we had the big updates for the second group. Group B took the ice a little bit later, and the big story for Group B was the fact that Travis Green teased that we would see a young right winger with Horvat and Pearson. Speculation said it was Niels Hoaglander, and Hoaglander was it. Hoaglander gets a chance to make an impression right away, playing with Bo Horvat. Green wasting no time finding out if Hoaglander can hang in the top six. And this is great, man. Niels Hoaglander coming over to Vancouver after his loan has expired, and now he is playing on a line in practice with Bo Horvat and Tanner Pearson. Ooh, man. You don't just do that 
for a guy that you don't have high expectations for. You don't just do that where you play a guy with NHL caliber players and then you just say, okay, now nah, screw it, we're not going to do it. Unless, you know, of course he's bad or whatever. You're just trying it out for the sake of seeing if it's going to work in the regular season. Here are some tweets from Thomas Strands talking about how Hoglander actually played. Hoglander baits a defender into a trip on one end while Howerluck and McEwen engage in a good battle in a three-on-two area drill at the other. Both bottom six hopefuls get their licks in with Howerluck throwing McEwen and down to the ice along the wall. Good intensity here from the Vancouver Canucks. Hoaglander using his edges well to protect the puck along the wall in some five-on-five -five offensive drills. It's just a practice, but it's fair to say he's running with the opportunity he's been afforded on day one of Canucks camp. These were the full lines for Group B. Pearson, Horvat, Hoaglander, Berchi, McCallis, and Bailey. That's an interesting one right there because... Hey, McAllis could maybe potentially challenge for a spot, who knows? Bailey is a guy who might be part of the taxi squad, and Sven Berchi is Sven Berchi. Roussel, Gaudet, McEwen, three NHL caliber players right there. Howerluck and Cole Lind as the extras. That's interesting to me. Cole Lind was very good in the AHL last season, so I actually expect him to challenge for a spot quite legitimately. And then for the defensemen, we have... Take a look at this. It's Ole Olevi and Tyler Myers. Okay. Ooh. Olevi with Myers. Okay. Okay. I like how that's sounding. And then you have, for the next pair, Hughes and Chatfield. Okay. People were speculating that because it's Joel and Chatfield here playing with Quinn Hughes, the plan is to have Travis Hamanick play with Quinn Hughes during the regular season because Chatfield is like the AHL version of Chris Tanev, a shutdown guy, defensive defenseman. Hamannick plays a similar style to that, so if speculation is correct, then we might be able to see a Hughes Hamannick pairing for the actual season. Because, of course we should, right? Edler is playing with Schmidt, which is a pair that provides good duality between the offense and the defense. The guy who is flashy and offensive in Schmidt, and the nice two-way defenseman presence in Edler. The same could be said about Hughes and Hamannick. Hamannick the defensive guy, Hughes the offensive guy, that makes sense. And then you have Tevez and Rafferty playing on the bottom pairing over there. Both of these guys were Vancouver Canucks free agent pickups. What? Two years ago? Oh my gosh, that was two years ago. Whoa, oh my goodness, I can't believe it was two years ago. But yeah, they're the new guys, supposedly. And then, of course, you have Mitch Elliott as well, the extra there. Demko and Kylie are over here as the goaltenders. So if we take a look at all the lines and we put everything together, we might be able to actually see a top six, if things stick the way they are in this practice, of... The lotto line, Miller, P.D. Besser. The second line would have Pearson, Horvat, Hoglander. The third line might have a combination of Vertanen with some of these other guys, Gaudet, McEwen, who knows if that's going to be scrambled around the way that we have it. And then you have the other lines there too, Roussel, Mott, Sutter, Beagle, you can throw in the rest of those guys. Who knows if Erickson even makes this team, man? There are so many interesting players that actually might have a shot. And then for the D pairings, you can probably expect, just from what we have right now, Edler Schmidt, Hughes Hamannick, and then you could either go Jordy Ben Rathbone or Yolevi Myers. And I think Yolevi Myers has a little bit more oomph to it because Yolevi is honestly an NHL caliber guy at this point in time. He probably is. Myers is pretty much already that. So, you know, we're getting what is to be probably a good projection of our lineup just based off of what we're seeing right now. For Hoaglander specifically, this is what he said about playing with Horvat and Pearson. It feels good. It's just the first day of camp, but I'll do my best to be a top six guy. And I know this video has been very positive, but let's go over one small little negative story that we probably don't want to see for our Vancouver Canucks prospects. Hey, Vasily Podkolzin, the guy got eliminated yesterday by Team Canada, and we have ourselves quotes from Jim Benning talking to John Abbott about the Podkolzin situation. He says that Podkolzin is free from the KHL on April 30th when his contract is up. The plan is to sign him then and get Podkolzin into the Canucks lineup ASAP. And April 30th is the end of April. Yeah, that's definitely not something that you need me to tell you, but the Vancouver Canucks have four games after April 30th. Toronto, Edmonton, Edmonton, and Calgary. Now, 
Who knows what's going to go on with Vasily Podkolzin and the whole quarantine situation if that happens? Who knows if the Russian KHL players are going to be able to get the vaccine because apparently there's a Russian vaccine out there. And if Podkolzin is able to get it, then hey, maybe he'll actually be okay. Who really knows? But if he comes over to Vancouver May 1st, immediately after April 30th, he won't actually play any regular season games if he goes through a two-week quarantine process because it'll take him until May 15th. But if the Canucks make the playoffs, then hey, who knows what's going to happen there? Who knows if there's even going to be a quarantine period needed at that point in time? So, Pod Colson, the plan is to get him immediately into the lineup once he's available on April 30th. Who knows? If we're going to have a season that actually sees the debut of both Hoglander and Pud Colson, would that not sound amazing, man? But thank you to those who made it to the end of this video. Talk to me in the comments about Hunter Shinkarek if you made it to the end to let me know you made it there for a chance to be featured in the next Canucks video because... Hunter Shinkarek is a guy whom I was super excited for, talking about at the Canucks training camps and preseason and all that stuff. When I think of Canucks training camp and the youth making the lineup, I automatically think of guys who failed in the past, and Hunter Shinkarek was one of them, and I say that with the utmost respect. So comment down in the comments, Hunter Shinkarek, to let me know you made it to the end of this video. Also, talk to me about the Canucks lines, Hoaglander, Pud Colson, and all that stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video. And, bye.